All right. I found love on a two-way street. Oh, yeah. And I lost it on a lonely highway. <laughs> I wish I could play that song. Shout out to E. Jones. Um, e. Jones is the one who has that song that Spice Adams uses on his page all the time. You know that you you know what I'm talking about Biff. You don't know. You know. No, you know Biff don't know. It's dope. Um. Anyway. <laughs> um. Yeah, that is the theme because Biff and I were just talking behind the scenes. Uh, first of all, thank you all for the heavy participation in the uh, Facebook group. Yes, uh, you guys, you guys have been awesome. A hundred and ten comments on a post from uh, this is one Mr. Post. You David guys have been- Bradley. David, I got we have David on the show. David's a troll. Uh, we gonna get <laughs> we gonna get right into it. Um, he liter- he said, "What are the benefits for a man to get married in 2019?" You know, a triggering question, obviously. What are the benefits uh, to a man getting married currently? So you know, some I'm not gonna some, put on my, my who is this dude phone. Shinrayo? Hold on, who is that? <laughs> he don't even have a real profile or picture. He about to get removed. Um, I'll take him out. Reveal yourself. One of, bro. Af- one of them Africans be in there trying to uh, put up his DJ stuff too, and I'd be the guy. Yeah. Nice. How do you, who invited these people? Um, you said one of them Smile Africans. <laughs> I'm hanging up. Um, on my but yeah, ben, what, do you think, what do you think? Of some, what, are, what do you think? Whoa, whoa, if whoa, any, whoa, there's whoa, any whoa, benefits dude, to getting married? Or a man? Not, huh? huh? I mean, first of all, would you? I didn't. I wasn't paying attention. Would you say? Okay, well, Biff, I know you would get married, so I wouldn't have to ask you that question. Would you even want to get married? But what do you think are benefits? Do you think there are any benefits? Um, so I don't like the that phrasing. I um, don't either. I don't. I wouldn't marry someone for the benefit of it. Like if I was doing it for the benefit of it, I wouldn't be marrying the girl that I'm with now. I'd look for someone that I could benefit off of. Because, you know, the maximum benefit. So that it's not even a, you know what I'm saying? I'd find like an old head millionaire chick or something stupid like that. If I'm looking mm-hmm. for benefits. I do, I, I'd rather say the benefits of being married in general. Because that's why I started with my lovely uh, soliloquy at the beginning. Um, singing. <laughs> it's a two-way street. You know what I'm saying? Um, number one. Um, you have a partner in crime. So... Your income automatic, your household income goes up. <laughs> well, technically you don't because you don't, if you're married, you don't have to testify against your spouse. So that's not your partner in crime. Huh, keep going. <laughs> that makes them the partner. You can't testify. No, no, exactly why you can't be my partner in crime. You don't know, I don't know either. I'm hanging up. <laughs> what sorry, Biff, what you ahead. said don't make sense. They can't testify against you. So that's not your partner in crime. I don't know. Then what are police okay. gonna ask me? Did I see shit? I don't know. Yeah, so that means they need to be your partner because they can't tell on you. I'm hanging up. Um, that's <laughs> one benefit. Your household income, your household income goes up. Oh, okay. Um, you are. I mean, and this is assuming that you are a person who is decent and you are doing what you're supposed to be doing. Household income goes up. To the pressures of a life are a lot lighter. Like. I'm a lot less stressed now that I'm in a relationship because I can kind of talk to her about things and, you know, reveal some things to her and vice versa. Uh, Three, it makes you feel manly. You know what I'm saying? And that's just me. Uh, It just feels good to have a woman to take care of and to do things for and to love. Um, Four, safe, consistent, and great sex. Um, That Mm -hmm. is a huge benefit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Knowing that you can just stick your tongue anywhere or stick get your nasty. anywhere. It get nasty and not have to worry about anything. Again, this is assuming that your spouse and you all are doing the right thing because I know there's people like, what are they cheating? Blah, blah, blah. Y'all know what I'm saying. Mm. These are some of the benefits um, or perks. Uh, what else? Uh, children. So your family legacy. You know, um, if you having, want children. If you want children. And um, a consistent... Uh, partnership you know you don't have to worry about necessarily baby mama or baby daddy drama you know what i'm saying it's we're together we made a decision together i mean just about you know i mean at the end of the day it's just all the things that come with someone who truly has your back for the rest of your life two people who decide to look each other in the eye and say i commit myself to you you know what i'm saying that that's really it like you know you have someone no matter what Again, that's a, that's under ideal circumstances. That's what I think it is. 
You know what I'm saying? It, yeah. The right woman will really help ground a man, and the right man will help really ground a woman. Yeah. You know, you got to be with the you right say one. Out of so, yeah. So, when people say benefits, obviously, you know, there's a lot of, there's, you know, there, it's twofold. You know, there's a lot of things you can do being single versus being married. So, I mean, when people say benefits, like some people don't see the point, don't see a reason. Cool, I understand. But if you have a one, if you have the right woman and you love her and things are going well and you don't want her to go nowhere, that you you, you gonna make sure she's not going nowhere. I, you know, I, I kind of. I don't know. I struggle with marriage sometimes. I don't think it's for everybody, though. I'll say that. No, I will say that marriage isn't for everybody. It's like, now, I do see the spiritual and the romantic side of things. You know, if you find that person that you feel that special enough that you want to create a union with lawfully, not <clears throat> don't see a problem with it. It's just, I've seen so much. I don't know. I guess since maybe in the U.S. the divorce rates are so high. I've just seen so much turmoil from it. It just kind of puts like a bad taste in your mouth, you know? And then when you see questions like, well, what, how can a man benefit everything for the woman? Like, not really. <laughs> Biff, all right. I mean, on paper, I mean, on paper, it looks good. And then depending, like you said, depending on how, you know, you guys' relationship are, exactly. how it ends, if it ends, like. Biff, you about to puke. You just agree with David. He said, <laughs> he said, in all honesty, I feel the institution of marriage is only kept alive by the benefits that are offered via the government, i.e. financial incentives, tax breaks. It is an honestly outdated and outmoded tradition at its very core and serves no actual purpose in modern society. Oh, um, no, see, now, I ain't say all that. You now, didn't say all that, all but... That. Now, not just agree with marriage. <laughs> now, if you want to get married, get married. It does serve a purpose. Now, don't let him sit here and say it don't serve no purpose. It Especially if you purpose, have some but, type uh, of religious or spiritual um, relations to somebody or some type of religion or anything like that, it definitely does matter to some people. So to say it doesn't matter, <clears throat> I wouldn't go that far. But to say it's more or less is looking like a business incentive now, I can say that. Yeah, because I mean, you like see you said, it like your very first pro was y'all have a combined income. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that, that's like I look at. It, that's why I said the other side of marriage is it is a business proposal. Like, could you imagine bring you going from a sixty thousand dollar household to a hundred and twenty thousand dollar household? Like, I you... mean, yeah, you're going from sixty to one hundred twenty, but you're also sharing it. It's yeah. not yours. It's yeah. not just yours. You... It's y'all. Yeah, but you sharing it with somebody that you actually want to share it with. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that could, and that wouldn't make no difference. Somebody that you love and you wouldn't mind sharing that with. You know, it's not a big deal, or you know, responsibilities are, you know, assigned to whomever. You know, you just do that and just put this in the melting pot. Yeah. But I can see but both no. sides. I can see both sides. Either you can be, it could be a good thing, but then you know it could be it could be looked at as a, a business move too. Yeah, a lot of people I think do it for a business move too. I mean, it just depends on the attention. Honestly, I wouldn't necessarily. And you know, I hate saying the word business move, but I would say a lot true. of people do it to get themselves out of the positions they're in. It's true. I mean, a lot of people like shit. You coming out? You got student debt, or you got some type of shit going on, or you can start up a business and you owe the bank some of our money back and. You know what I'm saying? There's always some shit going on. So if you got a partner that's willing to, you know, get down and help you with your debt or get down with your financial issues, then that's another reason. Like I'm gonna tell y'all like this right now. But Biff, you know what? That's the same reason why motherfuckers break up too. But this is home. What you just said. This is part of the issue. Um, I'm not gonna say issue. Here's what I think. Yeah, yeah. Here's what I think. Part of the issues with marriages are. Um, Mm -hmm. and I'm not married. Um, I'm just speaking from, you know. Uh, I don't think you necessarily got to be married to understand experience. how marriage works and what, what can see it fall apart. Yeah, I, I ain't got I just, experience, but I do one, not have seen People are afraid stuff. to have the conversations they need to have before they get married. Like, I had a girlfriend I was living with, and we knew how much money each other made, and we had the bills split, and we had savings set. And people's like, you did that? Blah, blah. I'm like, yes, because I keep hearing and reading about the how, one of the main reasons people break up and divorce is over money. So, no, let's have this money conversation now before, we spend, before I spend money on the ring, before I spend money on the ceremony, before all my parents and your parents and all our family and Facebook and half the world sees us I'm get married. Fly out, right. Do all of this before we get divorced. Have the conversation. If your pockets... And here's the other thing. You learn important things about the person. Like, if your pockets is busted or you're not the best financially, now, let me work with you to see what type of person you are. Because if you show me I'm not really trying to get right or fix this, that, let, that might let me know what kind of move I'm making. That lets me know what kind of, you know, situation I'm walking into. But 
you can't be but afraid see, that to have those conversations. That goes into compatibility too. That goes into yep. compatibility too. I know that's my weak suit, and I found somebody that that's his strong suit. And that's and so the other you know thing, I'm stubborn and hard head. Yeah, it is. It, that's that's how you, you compliment your partner. <clears throat> and so yeah, I was gonna be learning you something. Yeah, you know, you younger people, man. If you with somebody. You younger people, man. I'm when I say younger because I'll be. Saying, th- I'm getting ready to say well, Biff. Hold on now. I'm getting dusty, <laughs> bro. I, Biff, I'll be 35 <laughs> in December. You're almost Alex age. Um, Biff, I turn 30. When do we? You meet? know, Alex is like 52. <laughs> yo, we gotta yeah. crack some Alex jokes, yo, on this show, man. I miss my Alex. Alex is going on love. his uh his uh photo tour with him and his back muscles. The I'm oh, back God. tour is coming to a city oh, near you, God. to an Instagram. Near you. <laughs> so you know, you know, about to be some more office videos of him doing that fucking kung fu and then to the file cabinet. Right, look at this Mitch here, seven o'clock in the morning. All you see is yeah. You know what's and he's funny? Here doing doing kicks in slow motion like it's on Street Fighter, like Chun Li. Yeah. Oh my God! Don't get me started. But. Yeah, we need to talk to some more married couples. I'm gonna have some married couples on here to ask them what they fight about. Bye. But see, that's the thing. But no, but they're not. Like I wouldn't mind talking to a married couple, but I want to find a married couple that's a healthy married couple. I'm gonna have uh, Antoine I don't, on here. I don't want the ones that's you know not looking too good or bleak. Cause Lord God forbid somebody be like, well, that's not what happened. You know what I'm saying? Or somebody bring up a scenario that sounds awfully familiar. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not doing that on the show. That's just, this, 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 not Mari. It's not Mari, but it's okay. Mm-mm. All right, Beth, but moving on real quick. The next question, though. Somebody, I forgot the other name, I think it was Josh. He was in the group, too. What? Matter of fact, all these topics are coming from the group. Um, free range. Antoine and Chrishell, we want to have y'all on the show. Go ahead. Yeah. Free, free range parenting. Um, Earlier today, there was a post that was posted inside our group. And a young man was like, has anybody else encountered free-range parenting? And so, I never heard no shit like this. Now, I heard of tiger-style parenting. You heard, heard of what? Tiger-style parenting. Uh, shout out to Jeremy Baker. That's who posted that. Jeremy, we'll try yeah. to help you find a guest. Sorry, I, my parent, my, I didn't have a free-range household. My, my range was very short. And what? It, and there Biff, was, I'm still explaining. And there was a leather belt. Go ahead. <laughs> So now um, there's different styles, you know, there's tiger parents, the helicopter, you know, the parent that's always up your ass, and then he said free range parenting. Never heard of that. So, you know, I figured that's got to be some Caucasian shit. So I said, what is free range parenting? And he goes on to explain when your parents care that you're alive but don't give a fuck about you living, if that makes sense. So he basically said at 16, he was, he had like a lived in living girlfriend. He could do whenever, whenever the fuck he wanted. They didn't really care as long as he was just, like, breathing. And that shit just blew my mind. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? That's actually a lot more common than you think. But it's actually common among, I would say, Caucasian kids. Because growing up, I can remember Caucasian kids like that. Now, admittedly, my mama wasn't around. But it wasn't a, she wasn't around because she didn't care. She wasn't around because she was working three jobs. And she still had time, you know, to make it to my games or events when she could. You know what I'm saying? So I, I don't hold that against her. It's not like she didn't care. But that shit just blew my mind a little bit. Like, is That's... that, could that even really be considered parenting? You're just like, okay, I had you. I, I, as long as you're breathing and you're here, that's pretty much it. Like, I don't care. I don't think I could fathom having Grace and live with another girl at 16. Like, um, Jeremy, <laughs> shout out to you. You like you have a wonderful, beautiful family. Um, <laughs> something worked. <laughs> I hope that you. I mean, I hope it, you're not a free range yeah. father. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I I couldn't. And then you know what? I, I guess my question would be when did when do you start free ranging? Like the that free range shit start from no, that shit start early. From uh, my understanding, like I mean, although I lived in the projects, like our projects was like that little dot. A project that had to go to the white school so you know they can get the little public school funding and shit. <laughs> so from my understanding, they the kids, as far as I can remember, they've always been like that. Kind of like, well, what do you want to do? Like, matter of fact, I remember I was in sixth grade and I was babysitting this little <clears throat> young Caucasian kid, little boy, little girl. And his grandparents had gave him a check. And you know, growing up like black kids or you know, little minority kids, period, you get any money, they tell you what? Put it up. Mm-hmm. Go put it up somewhere safe. Go hide it. And, you know, you spend your money how you want to spend. Well, he got this nice ass check from his grandma, and then he just threw the bitch on the floor in the living room. 
Hold on, I'm reading a little bit more. So free range parenting actually sounds like it's lit. Um, yeah. The concept. Ra- you got Wikipedia. So take it with a grain of salt, y'all. The concept of raising children in the spirit of encouraging them to function independently and with limited parental supervision in accordance of their age of development and with a reasonable acceptance of realistic personal risk. So I guess the older they get, the more freedom you get. Well, shoot. If that's the case. Mm, my dad was kind of like that now that I think about it I'm sorry bitch can you explain that again one more time I was sending it to my child the, the very end of it <clears throat> um it's uh what it, I'm gonna just read the whole thing it's a concept of raising children in the spirit of encouraging them to function independently and with limited parenting supervision in accordance of their age and the age of development and with a reasonable acceptance of realistic personal risk so See, okay, now, Biff, now, no, no, that's not, that doesn't sound like what he had, because yeah, living just, with a girlfriend at 16 is not within reasonable, you know, age limit group. <laughs> that's what Wikipedia okay, said. Okay, reasonable would be like, says, you 16, and you'd be like, okay, mom, I want to go to the skate ring. Okay, that ain't no big deal. You know, you choose between the skate ring or the football game or whatever, so I'd be like, okay, go ahead. So maybe he choose the, um... The football ring or skating ring, that's giving them autonomy, giving them independence. So, we should have them on the show <laughs> to talk about this. That's interesting because my dad, mom, hmm, I'm trying to think of how my parents were if I had to describe it. I don't know what I would describe it as. My dad kind of really left me alone. I mean, he cared for me, made sure groceries cooked and all that, but it wasn't, I wouldn't say free range, but I basically could do what I wanted to do. But that was because I built trust. Like, I called home and let them know where I was at, you know, stuff like that. Um, didn't get in trouble in school, you know what I'm saying? I just did what he said. Um, and that just, it, the, the more he, the more I built the trust, the more I could just do what I wanted, you know? Um, yeah. So, I but mean, I mean, like with my mom, like even with me, I believe my mom was free range with me because I never had any issue. It was like, a, I was very trusting my mom. I was very open. So I would just tell her I had no reason. Yeah, I ain't had did, shit yo. done. You told me you used to I tell am. your mom wild stuff, yo. <laughs> All the shit. Like, I mean, she know I'm not going to say I'm sitting here in the black sheet of the family, but she know I'm watching the beat of my own damn drum. She know I'm headstrong and I'm going to do what I want to do when I want to do it. Fam, you made, and I just you had, made the drum, Biff. <laughs> and I have no problem telling my mom, like, all right, mom, we, we supposed to be going, you know, to the game tonight. And after the game, we're going to go here. As long as I had my phone to let her know where I was, when I was. You know what I'm saying? She kept track. She had no reason to distrust me. I went out here. Well, I was fucking a little bit. But I went out here, like, fucking my back mm-hmm. out. I wasn't, like, I didn't even look at, I didn't, I thought drugs was gross until I got, like, college. So I went out here doing drugs, like. You said until you got to college. Yeah. What? Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. oh, Biff, you want to hear my first story about how to, I came, how I encountered weed, my first weed? <coughs> I can't tell my story. Go ahead. One weed, please. So, yeah, so matter of fact, you know, we was at the infamous, I ain't going to say my school, but, you know, we was holding it down, holding it down across the gate or whatnot. And so it was Martin Luther King uh, holiday. And so, like, in the band, like, I know a lot of my friends from Augusta was in the band at the school. And you so, told you know, this story. Is, Wait, if you oh how I got and that? you told it on here, yeah, I did. you told it a while ago. Continue. <laughs> oh yeah, so it's like RDOs, Red Dog Order. So that's basically like all the Georgia kids that go to you know colleges and HBC bands or whatever. But they was my niggas beforehand, and so they was like, "Hey, Biff, do you want to smoke?" And I was like, "Hey, I don't know how to smoke, but I was sitting there catch contact like a motherfucker." So they was like, "All right, come on in." And so everybody's like giving one dude forty dollars. So I'm like, it's like, why y'all giving him forty dollars and shit? So he leave and then he come back, but he come back with a book bag. And he opened a book bag and voila. Magic. <laughs> All the green. <laughs> voila. So everybody's like, all right, everybody roll up your three blunts. Even mine is like eight, nine people. Mm. Everybody rolling up. So I'm like, all right, cool. That ain't no big deal. So we all in the bathroom and stuff hot boxing, because you know you can't be smoking regular in college. So we in there hot boxing and shit. And so the blunt come to me. So I tap the person beside me like, hey, the blunt trying to come to you. And so he look at me and say, hey, there's no skipping in here. Mm. <laughs> and so I said, oh, well, I don't know how to smoke. And he was like, darling, welcome to my academy. <laughs> and we smoked maybe, I don't know, we smoked the whole fucking lot. I know we smoked so much weed that night. And then we stopped and then we started playing Halo. 
until it was like 6.30. And then we was like, you know what? At 6.30, Pause. we're going to go to the motherfucking cab and fuck it up. Biff, we had not gone to sleep. Biff, this is like a uh, Wait, I'm going to pause. Let me tell you. <laughs> This era Biff is talking about, if you didn't, if someone didn't have the Xbox with the Halo, you were trash. That, that is why <laughs> Xbox, that's why Microsoft is legendary, bro. But go ahead. Woo, yeah. Talking about Halo Nice. Good God. Halo Nice and Gears of War. Goodness. But yeah, so we stayed up to 6.30 playing uh, Deathmatch and all that shit. So we like, all right, we finna fuck it up. We finna go to the cab. Boom, get to the cab. Everybody know HBCU's cab open late on holidays. Hey. Our high ass forgot that. Cab don't fit to 8 o'clock. So what we do? We finna go to the only McDonald's in the damn town. Hey. And I'm talking about Biff. I'm talking about we smell like 10 pounds. I'm talking about as soon as we walked in, everybody had snapped. And then we saw how we sat there in front of the menu for like 10, 15 minutes trying to decide whether we want to dance. Swaying. <laughs> right, yep, yep. <laughs> now let me get a goddamn McGri- Goddamn, goddamn. But that goddamn... That southern chicken biscuit look good too, but goddamn, that bacon nigga cheese bagel. We did that shit by 15 minutes, and then next thing I know, we ate. And then one of my homeboys, he was still high. He went and grabbed the hose and put that bitch in between his legs and was walking around the parking lot. What? <laughs> All right, y'all, it's time to go. Man, we smoked so much, All right, man. And that was my introduction. That was the first time I ever smoked. And you know how much weed I smoked that night. Biff, when I say that was the best 14 hours of sleep I had the next day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh man. High sleep. Oh my goodness. Oh, High God. sleep. That's it. There is nothing like it. You know what? Um I do I can tell you about my first time actually. Um uh, what in the world? <laughs> I um <laughs> T.I.'s album, T.I. versus T.I.P. came out. My roommate used to smoke all the time, but I didn't smoke with him. And we were going to the movies to see. It was one of the Transformer movies. I can't remember which one it was. It might have been the first one. of the Whenever T.I. versus T.I.P. came out. And <laughs> we went to Best Buy. I bought the CD. This is how old this is. I bought the CD. He was like, man, let me get a copy. I was like, man, I'll burn you one. Sorry, T.I. I was like, I'll burn you one. He's like, no, man, I want the real thing. I was like, all right, man. So I bought him a copy. And we sat in the car. This is this is my ignorant self. Like I knew a little bit about the streets, but I didn't know all the streets terminologies. So we sitting in the car. He's like, "Yo, man, can we can we can we hot box real quick?" I said, "I said we." I said a hot box. Y'all, y'all hungry? Like what? He's like, "No, we about to light up." He was like, "Just crack the window." So we was like in the back of the parking lot. This is so stupid in hindsight. We could have totally got arrested. And we put the Ti CD on. And he was like, man, you might not want to be in here for this. I'm like, man, F it. We started passing that thing around. That that T.I., that's one of my favorite albums to this day. That's actually a good album, but yo, I'm talking about, you talking about smelling like we just came off the weed farm. So we go into the movies. (laughs) They were laughing at me because it was some good stuff, man. I was so like sensitive i was like why am i feeling like this and they're like just use it so i'm like rolling popcorn across my fingertips i wasn't even looking at the movie i'm just <laughs> i'm just enjoying all these new feelings and sensations man <laughs> i was gone yo and i demolished that yo we ate so much man oh my goodness yeah. There's nothing like the high, the high that, oh man. It's actually kind of scary because it's like, you know you eating, but you don't even feel like you eating. Like, <laughs> I know I just ate a ton of food, but I feel like I could do more. Yeah, yeah. And then you start coming up with combinations you ain't never came up with before. Mm-hmm. Oh, Niggas. man. And then you get the little after effect of like, you swallowed it like 20 minutes ago, but it still feel like you swallowing stuff. <laughs> oh, it's so good. It's like the shadow so effect good. in real life. That's exactly why I be high all the time. Oh my goodness. Mm, no comment. No comment. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Um Okay, last question though, Biff. I have room. one one quick question. I've seen this being debated, but I've seen this really cool thread where a bunch of men who have female best friends made them grooms women in their wedding. And I actually seen shout out to uh Milan. Uh his best uh, woman. Was his best friend. Hmm. Was a female. And she was with the guy. And she had her tux tailored too. Her pants tailored too. 
and her shoes match at all the other guys, well, heels, you know, match other guys' you know, flats or whatever, dress yeah. shoes. <clears throat> and she looked good, but that made me raise a question because then I went and looked under the thread and then I seen like some women and some men, like I would never, you know, why why she's a girl, she needs to be a bridesmaid if she wants to be in a wedding and uh, I don't understand and I'm just like what nope. what'd you do, Biff? Biff, could I be a groomsman or would you make me a bridesmaid? A <clears throat> couple things. <clears throat> um there's a couple dynamics there. Number one, all y'all can shut up because them two that are standing at the altar pay for all this. So hello, they can hello. put whoever they want, wherever they want. Um, you say, would I make you a groomsman? Uh, <laughs> a groomswoman. Um, it depends. Um, I have to have enough to match my girl side and my line brothers plus my brother is already five people. I don't know how many people she's going to have, but I have to start extending um, I bet if you're gonna make me a bridesmaid. <laughs> oh god. I didn't say I was gonna make you a bridesmaid, but that that'd be interesting. Um I'm coming to the bachelor party. I'm not having a bachelor party. Not not a tradition. Allegedly. Not a traditional Allegedly. one. No. Nah, Allegedly. Not, I've been to some. It's it's not it's never Okay, just, but it's not yours. I know, but I never Hey, okay, we gonna we gonna cater to you, Bill. I know my my yeah. friend. Yeah, all bachelor parties ain't necessarily got to be ass and titties. Although that shit is nice. Yeah, that's what I. That's what I'm titties. saying. I would like to like go on a trip or like something like that. Like yeah, like, that's what I'm saying. Like you can do because like, I've been to those vacation. like you're talking about with ass and titties, and it's kind of like. Uh, they, I mean, though, Biff. I mean, Biff. If we take you somewhere and this will have an average strip club, then mm, as long as y'all pay for it, I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm just about saying. to marry mine free forever. I ain't about to pay for it. All right, um. Yeah, you better support the hustle, shit. No, y'all gonna pay for it. It's hey, my night. Don't let them take me in the back room. All right. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that because I wouldn't want my girl to do it because I'm jealous. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, male strippers is very different than female strippers. If I anything, I bet your girlfriend would want to go see female strippers. You know what? I hear that. Um, I do hear no, that. Y'all like times, going to the male girl strippers strip club. or not? Yeah, because. At the end of the day, like, y'all know it's outside the fact that I like females, but at the end of the day, it's because it, it's exotic and it's a dancing and it's sensual and it looks better. It's curvy and, you know, it comes, it's more sexual, it's more appealing mm -hmm. than having a little wang flop in your face and a nigga do 50 push-ups and then look at you like. He did 50 push-ups. <laughs> okay okay Disgusting. so uh, not for that of ten, yeah most of the time it actually was even more funny i um you know i've been in strip clubs a lot i see a lot of couples actually like at bachelor parties they'd be there with the fiance or it'd be like the the fiances are there I've but they're that. two different parties they're at two different parties but at the same club so she over there with the girls and he over there with the guys but they both enjoying themselves hmm. but i mean it's all like but to each other like you said each couple enjoys different things so and like you said, if you really, if you honestly, really, and truly in your heart, passionately don't want to go to the strip club, then we're not going to take you to the strip club. But if it's just like a no, and you like got your hands on your face, but looking through the fingers. Listen, y'all. I'll, yeah. I'll take you to the strip club. <laughs> I'll put suggestions out there and see who does what and when and where and how and go from there. Um, I don't want to be a party pooper. Cause I feel like the bachelor party is like, it's yeah, it's for the bride and the groom, but it's also for you to have a chance to hang out and chill with everybody too. Um, so I think that's cool. But as far as the groomsman thing, I don't know. I have to think about it. I wouldn't I wouldn't count it out because uh, Nika been asking me to do that for the longest. She was like, I'm going to be the best man. I'm like, bruh. I know. <laughs> oh what? my goodness! Yeah, yeah. Nika wants to be my best man. I was like, Nika, you're not a man. You're a woman. That's one of my oldest, nearest, and dearest friends. I, are you making you, a face? That, but Milan made her. Yeah, I am. But Milan um <laughs> made her best friend woman. Uh. <laughs> I don't even want to talk I mean, about it's possible. Anymore. I don't even know who my best man would be. Well, that's interesting. Oh, now, see, Biff, that's going to start a fight in the group chat. Why is that going to start a fight? Because <laughs> the boys are going to be like, I'm supposed to be the best man. Why is he the best man? I'm the you know, one man. of my close friends got married, and I thought his brother was going to be his best man, but his best friend was his best man. But when I see movies and stuff, I realize that that's the case a lot of times, too, even if you have siblings. No. I mean, I'll probably make my sister, like, matron of honor or some shit, the one that's married, but she ain't gonna be my 
my what they call it maid of honor maid of honor what a, then what's a matron of honor we don't even know these terms matron is married okay you can okay. have a matron of honor and a maid of honor Hmm. One is married, and your maid of honor doesn't necessarily have to be made married, but if it's a matron of honor, she has to be married. Interesante. Okay. Mm-hmm. Good to know. Well, you know what? I don't care if it make me a bridesmaid, because I know. Um, I'm not committing to I know, anything. I know. It's too I know. Soon. Girlfriend. I know. Girlfriend got cute. Um, she got good taste. Oh my god. I'm gonna talk to her about that when I talk to her uh, tomorrow. She's, yeah, she got good taste, so I ain't worried about it. She's pretty too, so I know she's gonna pick a pretty color. Oh yeah, we already talked about colors and themes and all that. Please um, tell me, please tell me. She One has this night cream with a K. <laughs> no, I did want crimson in there though. Um, I somehow. knew it. I was just getting ready to say. I that, just but... like the way crimson looks. Um, I don't care. Uh, we were talking about some things, but you know that's you know that's the, ahead of time. But that's that's the kind of guy I am too. We're not. And I know people listen like you engaged. No, we're not engaged. But uh, my G, Remember that is the... shit to talk about. Like I thought. Yeah, about exactly. That. Like... I need to know these things in advance because. This is stuff that I'm going to have to face. Like, I don't like surprises. <laughs> you don't want to yeah, wait like till you get engaged and the clock has already started. Like, I'm right. on the other and clock. Then, like, even before then, like, the guy I'm talking to now, like, um, we were talking and I was like, you know, I want a house with this, this, and that, and the fourth. And we both got kids and stuff. So we, like, calculating, like, what would cost this and how it would work with kids and stuff. And I'm like, we ain't nowhere near marriage. But that's something to think about. Again, you get married to somebody or you start being with somebody long term, that's shit to think about eventually. Yeah, like true. we already know like yeah i do eventually want to get married not right now but yeah i do so we know marriage is on could be you know a possibility but that's shit to talk about like i'm not sitting here worried about like are you gonna text me back do you still care about me like oh that's for sure talk it's the about other shit you got it. to worry about it oh that skeeto got me good I know one got me on my kneecap, bro. That jump been itching all day. Uh, damn, that bit me on the back of my knee. I'm sitting here dying right Ooh, now. Ooh, that'd be the worst <laughs> one. It'd be the corner Ooh. too. Yeah, that the one in the back of the knee or ones where it's like in the crack of like your arm or in the crack of like the bend of your knee or some shit. They'd be targeting. They'd be getting my girl on the ankles and the wrist. Blood flow. The I mean, she got good circulation down there. That ankle be, man, when you get one on the ankle, oof. That should be the word. It be ashy, too. <laughs> and then it be attracting other creatures. All right. Uh, dang, I had a question for you. I did have another what? question for you. Hold up, Biff. Ugh. One moment, please. One moment. Oh, my gosh. I need to call somebody. Oh, Fantasia. So, well, nah, I'm not going to do that. She said, <laughs> you bitches need to submit to a motherfucking man, and then you'll be motherfucking happy. She... But what y'all motherfucking niggas failed to realize in her context yeah, y'all didn't read was it. you submit to a good man. You and submit also... to a man that can lead. You submit to a man that you trust. I didn't say go find Rodney off the damn corner and say I submit to you. That's not how that shit works. And it doesn't mean you're not a queen. You don't boss up. It doesn't you mean... You are less than or anything. Or you're a yet. slave. Like, when women don't like that word, I've heard. Like, I've mentioned that to a couple of women yeah, that I've talked to. That, I'm not submitting to nobody. Like... I'm like... Ugh. She was just saying, you know, the man is the king. The woman is the queen. You know, let him do his job and lead. Like, but he's doing it for you. Like, he consult consults and confers with the queen. Even if y'all look right. at, even if y'all look at like a lot of history shows and like all those, like, symbolically look at kings and queens. He always goes back to the queen about decisions and things of that nature. Like, or really, some shit that happened, and he run back to his bottom bitch. Like, I'm it's like up. with married couples when <laughs> when the married couples when they make a big purchase. Don't nobody go out and make no big purchase by themselves. Yeah, this truck may be in my name, but I'm going to call my wife real quick and say, hey, do this sound good to you? What you think about this? Or if she's out and about and she sees some shit or, you know, it's like a car oil change or some shit. They're like, babe, I need this, this, and this. Like, what am I supposed to do? Let me talk to them real quick. You know what I'm saying? Something as simple as that. Yep. It's not about you being like, wash my motherfucking dishes and 
clean my house and stuff. It's not about that. Because he wouldn't have to say that. He'll see you cleaning up and then he'll be like, well, what you want me to do? Take the trash out? Or exactly. What? Like some. That's how that works. He's not going to sit here and watch you struggle. Do you need help? Now, if you want to be a bitch and be like, no, or, you know, not necessarily a bitch, or if you just want to do it by yourself and say no, then you can't be mad if he, you know, keep it moving, going about his business. Right. And I think um, a lot of you, you know, it's not about the man coming in and doing everything for you and taking over your life. Like, I think a lot of people are too attached. And this is going to... I think we talked about this before, but I think some people are too attached to their independence. Like, I think I heard on another podcast, people talking about, can you be independent while you're in a relationship? And it's like, I do feel like you can still have your own individualities. Like, I'm in a relationship, yeah. but my girlfriend still goes out and does stuff with her friends and stuff independent of me. I have nothing to do with it. No comments, no nothing. I'm just like, let me That's do, not let, healthy to have a partner in your face 24-7. Is it, it's is not it healthy either. to be around them a lot? Of course, that can definitely be good, especially if you compliment each other and you help each other out. But to constantly be around them 24-7 with no interaction with other parties, that is not healthy. Who yeah. would even want that? And But back Nobody. to the original question, I don't think the issue is so much we want to be independent. The issue is I've been conditioned to be independent for so long. When I'm offered help, initially, I'm going to feel like either this shit too good to be true. Mm-hmm. Or it's gonna be like, all right, this is gonna be an, this, this is gonna have to take some adjusted, adjusted. And then, yeah, and, it, and it, I'm the I'm the, the number one example. I, I'm definitely one of the last people to ask for help. Like that shit eats my pride and ego away. Yeah, to ask for help. Yeah, yeah. But getting in a relationship and finding somebody that's like, girl, will you just shut the fuck up? I will help you. And then that, the other thing that is changes things. People, this is another issue people have. They feel like they can't be themselves. And it's like, you can be yourself. You just have to have, find someone you can be yourself with. with? Someone Thank who accepts you. you. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's been plenty of girls that I've liked and dated. And it's like, I could not be myself with them. It wouldn't work. And I had to let it go. You know, or they ended yeah. up letting me go because it didn't work. Because I was, I could not be myself. I was uncomfortable. I'm a thousand percent myself with my girl and she's a thousand she's more of herself than she was before in my opinion like she's she's doing things that she she's told me that she never thought she'd be able to do in a relationship because she how she felt about things and how guys typically react to things I'm like look you have what I need in a woman to your core you know what I'm saying like all that other stuff eh we good you're like you're not perfect I'm not perfect and if you accept my flaws the least I can do is accept yours back like it's a two way street. I found love. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. You're talking about relate relationships. Um I know, bitch. That's just crazy though. But that was a good interview. Y'all need to listen to that. Yo, Fantasia got married in three weeks and she said the only reason they did a prenup is because he brought it up. Like she was about to just marry him. Like that's what happened in three weeks. And they they ain't even smash. But see, that's the thing. You that's can't, some crazy you combo. You can't tell nobody about a connection. You can't tell nobody about how they feel. Yeah. Like, just like it took me six months to a year to tell one person I loved them. And just like I knew I loved this nigga a month after. Like, you know, it's, just, it's different. Everybody's different. And I hate how people are always trying to put a timetable on stuff. Like, you three can. weeks. I know initially, realistically, no, that does not sound right. But if you feel like that's your one, and you feel like in your heart of hearts and your souls of souls, like that's the one for you. Who am I to tell you that shit fucked up? Go for it. Yeah, the only thing I say do what about you feel like is right is, for you, and if, if you yep. if that honestly and genuinely makes you happy, and you are a better functioning person, and you become a better human because of that person, then I'm all for it. Go right on ahead, girl. If you happy, I'm I'm wonderful. That's scary, bitch. I, Three weeks. It is, but it's like they ain't even a that, month. <laughs> <laughs> like we met in August and got married in August. <laughs> oh, you could have met in the middle of August, got married in September or something like that. <laughs> you do. <laughs> Yo, I like the story how they met though. Um, it was interesting, and but you know what? She she said she's a very praying and very um in in tune with the Lord, and she's gotten signs before, so that's kind of didn't surprise me. Um, mm -hmm. but I hope things continue to work. She seems extremely happy coming back to music. Um, as well. Um, what she said her album was gonna be called? I forget. It's something about sex. Hmm? 
Yeah, something about sex because there's a lot of people, women who haven't who are unhappy having sex or something like that. I forgot what she called it. Um, oh. but anywho, in any woo, anywho, shout out to you, Fantasia. Uh, all right, I gotta take a nap before work. So, <laughs> oh, my laptop is charging up more than seventy percent. Yay! It was acting crazy before. Um, <laughs> shout out to everybody that's continued to support the show. We definitely appreciate it. Uh, don't forget to check all the web links. Um, shout out to Libsyn. I love you guys. You all are doing a great episode. We're getting way more traction. Y'all, tell a friend about the show, man. Put us down with some of your friends, man. We're trying to expand and grow. Um, don't forget you can email us from my experience podcast at gmail.com. You can join the Facebook group from my experience podcast. There's <laughs> We post a lot of crazy stuff. Some of the stuff is like legit. Some of the stuff is just to bring up, you know, conversations. But we talk about any and everything in there um so shout out to all the hard-working single mothers out there the single fathers the married couples the people who look in the date the people in relationships and the people trying to get their life together i'm done <laughs> all right Beth. well my honey then came and he didn't cook me steak and lobster the hell because oh Biff, i didn't tell you did i no, what? I got a job. Yeah, you did. You told me last episode. Last week, yeah. Well, no, I was actually, the the offer came in, rather. Oh. It was good news, and I was like, they're waiting on my rec- um recommendations and stuff. And then I got the actual offer yesterday, so. Congratulations, Biff. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a long time coming. It's been rough, rough 2019. Rough. Rough, <laughs> yes, rough. Like just like that, rough. We gonna finish it out strong, though. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We finished it strong, and actually, my side hustle actually found somebody that don't just listen. He actually got on my butt about starting stuff up and getting projects started and all that. And so I actually got some other little side hustles coming about soon. So it's just good. And so far, you know, we did fine getting up out the mud. <sighs> I just didn't know how long that storm was going to last. Yeah, the storms are trash. They're trash, but you know what? It's over. So, Biff, enjoy your dinner. I'll holler at you later, and we'll catch y'all next week on From My Experience Podcast, okay? All right, you guys. Stay you, stay down, stay black, and stay proud, and we will catch you next week. Love you. Peace. Peace.